So to help you, uh, would you raise your hand if you have your calculator here today? Hands up, hands up. Okay, not everyone, hands down, but enough of us. Would you get it out, please, if you don't have it out? Pop it out of your bag. And I expect most of you have a calculator very similar to this. If you don't, I'm going to draw some pictures on the board to help you see the, um, the symbols that I'm after. So, there are a few particular buttons that are going to be really important to us, okay? So I'm looking right in the middle, up here in this grey part with the little buttons, and there are two buttons that I'm particularly interested in, okay? So they look like this, and they're right next to each other, like so. You can even draw these in your book if you like, so that you will know what you are referring to in case you forget in the future. So these are the two particular buttons I'm interested in, these little grey ones, and one of them has this square root symbol on it, and then there's like a blank underneath because you get to fill in the number, right? Just above the square root button, you can see written, I think it's probably in yellow on your calculator, there is the cube root, right? How do you get to that thing above? How do you get to the yellow? Yeah, really. Press shift. And yeah. Press that button. So for any of those buttons, if you want to get to the thing above it, shift will do it. And then beside it, you've got this guy. What do you reckon that's about? That's squared. Very good, yeah. So you've got square in there, and I think, um, in fact, yeah, up above here, I've actually, um, I've actually not given myself enough space. I think it's right there is the X cubed button. Do you have that? Yeah. yeah. So this will square a number for us and this will cube it. Yes. Also, well, if you want to not write two or three, click the, the one on the right. Yeah, that's right. You've got lots of different options. I don't want to get too confused, so we'll just look at these three buttons first. Okay. So now what I want you to do is, just to get a feel for this, right? Let's have a look at some of these results here. I can just go to on my keypad. And then I can hit the square button. And you can see it comes in index form there, up in the, in the um, top right. And of course, you can hit equals, and you get the answer you expect. Right? Does that make sense? Um, do you remember a few minutes ago, I told you that 11 squared was 121? We can check that, right? 11, hit the square button. And you should get your answer back. Okay. So now, you can see that you can use that in reverse as well. Let's just verify what we just said. If I clear all of that, Press the square root button, that's this one. And then you'll see on your, um, on your display, it will literally give you a little box. Up on your display, it will look like this. And you can put a number in there. So I'm going to type 121. Right? That's now underneath the square root button. So it looks like this. And if you hit equals, fingers crossed if your calculator is worth the money that you paid for it, you should get 11. Fantastic. Okay. And the same way, remember I said to you, I just pulled out of a hat that the cube root of 343, I said it was 7. Can you test it for me? Yeah, 343, so we've got to go shift, shift, press the square root button, then you type in 343, and thank goodness I can still do numbers. Hooray. There you go. Okay, so, so, now you can see how it works, and that's the basic skill. Mr. Wu, yes. how do you do the thing where you go um, the squared three? Squared three? No, do you mean do you mean to the power of three? Yeah, yeah. Yep. So there's a button above the square root button that looks like that. It's got a three instead. Oh, mine doesn't have that. Oh, okay. If yours looks a bit different, that's okay. It might be hiding somewhere else. Now, remember when we did our review questions, I had actually all different kinds of powers. Just while we're all looking at our calculators together, you can see, Millie pointed this out a second ago, beside the X squared button, I think you'll have this button. Do you see that one? Yeah. Do you have that one? Yeah. So now you can pick a number. Let's all do five, for instance. Okay, five. If you press this button here, it lets you choose the power. You don't have to do two or three. You can pick any power you like, right? So if I press that, what power would you like? Three. Five, you could do two or three, but we've already got buttons for those. I'm going to go ten because it's nice and big. I can't do that in my hand. And it hands me a suitably large number. Oh my goodness. Okay. Now, if you put in a really, really big number, the numbers start to get a bit crazy. And if you put a big enough number, let's see, I'm going to put in... I put in five to the power of a million, and it said to me, math error, because his brain same. his same. brain is not big enough. Yes, okay. And that's all right? It's that's all right. Math error. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Mine yes. says 1.6155871342 times 10. Yeah, now... To, 60, to the power of 60. 
Yes, so we're going to get to how to read those bigger numbers a bit later on, but I think you've got the important skills that you need, which is mainly these three, okay? Alright, so, one last thing before I set you on the exercise. Would you please draw for me a table? I'd like it to have two columns and one, two, three, four, five rows. Would you do that for me? That'll be the last thing we do together, and then I'll set you to work. So I can do X and Y axes in this thing. You can do, wait, really? Well, I don't, it's K, it's K up that column. I'll have to have a look. Oh. You might be doing statistics. You yeah, yeah, yeah. Exclamation yeah. marks on that. So yes, exclamation marks mean something really, really interesting. I can't wait to show you what they are. This is so cool. Okay, so, I asked you to draw for me, this is the last thing, a table, two columns, five rows. And the reason why we're doing this is just so that you can see how all of these different um, pieces of mass that you know, they fit together. They're this beautiful hole, okay? So, a beautiful hole? Like a hole with a W, as in uh, a whole thing together. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, was trying to think of, I was trying to think of a suitable synonym for, for hole, not like, like hole, but anyway, if you think of one, then no. Now, um, operations. Operations. You know loads of operations. Can someone tell me what's an operation I can put between two numbers? Anyone? An easy one? Yes, Fabba. Multiplication. Multiplication. Okay, I'm going to put that in the second row. You'll see why in a second. Um, if I multiply, right? So, for example, I could multiply by 7, right? Every operation has what we call its opposite. The fancy word is inverse, okay? Um, that will undo the operation. What's the opposite of multiply? Yes, Christian. Division. Division. So I'm going to write divide over here. Right. So multiplying by seven, dividing by seven, they kind of collide with each other and cancel that. Right. Give me another operation. Another operation that you know. A simpler one. Someone else. Yes. Minus. Are. Okay. So minus. Minus is the opposite of. Plus, right? Adding and subtracting. So I'm going to put them right at the top. If I add a number, that's usually what most people think of as the first one. We thought it last. That's okay. Um, for example, if I plus 7, if I add 7, the opposite of that is subtract. Add, subtract. By the way, just as a little minor thing, minus, minus is actually uh, not... Not this thing here. It's it's not a verb. It's a it's an object there. So you should say I'm going to subtract seven rather than a minus seven. Minus is kind of the name of the symbol. So anyway, that's a minus. Okay, now we've just learned new operations and their opposites. Okay, new operations and their opposites. So the first new operation was squaring. So if I wrote seven squared. We've got this right here, right? The opposite of squaring is this guy, the square root. If I did seven squared, that takes me to 49, doesn't it? Seven times seven? I can undo the squaring by using the square root. The square root of 49, that'll take you right back where you started. And the last one we learnt, tying it all up in a nice neat knot, is cubic, right? So I could say, for example, 7 cubed, which we did on our calculator before, and you checked that I wasn't just making it up, right? 7 cubed is 343, big number. But I can go back to the number I started with if I use the opposite, the cube root. So for example, the cube root of 343, sorry I didn't make my table big enough, okay?